to sit in Austria and yeah. want to pass a test, yeah. so they don't do dual nationality. Yeah. So I'd have to give up English yeah. 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 I don't want to do No, I mean, the Dutch I could have got with my dad. My dad became British about five years before I was born. So if my dad had been Dutch when I was born, then I could have been Dutch. So I've researched it quite I have even looked into getting German passports yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 passports on German passports on German you know if you've got any connections if you were descendants of somebody who was killed in California or had some connection with Germany before the war you can get German citizenship they're very generous with that but my 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 his family was Dutch, yeah, Austrian, Jewish, and Jewish. It's his own world. Yeah, you're in the California Versailles. So, obviously, it was a disaster. I was definitely late to the party. But we're now being semi. Yeah. I'm not still feeling in London. I mean, we're so far away from the But. Well, it's it's tragic because I think it's my life on there. The photo I was in Leamington in 1997 when it happened. I can't remember. It's not London's cultural. But anyone can come down. No doubt that's a joke. The history is part of his worldview. Jewish people are not very religious. You can't really be racist against Jewish people. It's very powerful. And it's very important to that's a theory behind it. I understand that. Uh, sorry, I understand the logic of yeah. thinking, yeah. but it's, it's just strong. It's, 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 it's kind of. It's a stone. It's, 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 it's a stone. It's a stone. It's, 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 it's and that's why he's. You've got to think about it. Why? Why, why are there so many people in the left pro Iran yeah. which ones go to the Yeah, because they're in favour of anybody who's against the West. Could they be worse than to come? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't, no, I think it could be. Some of that's a good thing. You think it could be worse? Yeah, yes, I do. Is it like the new series? I think it's a good thing. Because that could be the trash of the economy. Yeah, that's true. Not that much. Because, because, because otherwise they're not going to meet you by the way to go to that. Plus, I don't know. I really can't. Quite. It's going to be some interactive over here. So, maybe put it up. I don't know if I'm going to have a little bit. <laughs> that's right, that's what that's what we have to chill out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 The only reason, I know you can all hear me in here, but uh, it's actually, this is all being live streamed. So uh, at the end of tonight, if you want, you can go home and watch the whole thing all over again. How exciting is that? <laughs> now, you're set up, you've got some wine. Boys and girls, this is Hannah Haas. Uh, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, Hannah Haas. Haas, Haas. Mm -hmm. oh. But it, a lot, it's, yeah. A okay. lot of people say different okay. names. And well, we'll stick with Hannah for the moment. Um, <laughs> and uh, these guys have just come down from Sheffield uh, today. Uh, a couple of nights, uh, same venue right down is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, delighted to have you here in Chesham. You are in the yard, the same yard where the first two Simon and Garfunkel gigs took place. Yes. Wow. How cool is that? Okay. Um, I, I'll give you another very cool thing about this, where you are now. This is um, this place was built for hospitality in 1560. Uh, this building, uh, and I've had a few Americans say, "Oh, that's older than my country." And um, 
a lot older. <laughs> There's a couple of Indians I've met who would actually want to take issue with that. Yes. However, I'm not going to go there right now. But the, 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 um, what I was going to say was this. In uh, 1792, there were 6,000 people in this town. So if you go back in demographics, that's huge. Okay? Um, but the whole town refused sugar in protest of the slave trade. So that the whole town stood up to the whole rest of the British Empire and said, do you know what, this is wrong? Uh, so you're in a very cool town. And I want to make you feel very, very welcome. Would you please make Hannah feel very welcome? Yeah. Hannah House. Thank you. Thank you.
it's such a small room that I'm like, oh, the guitar is not loud. <laughs> I thought it was just really low. <laughs> um, yeah, how's it, how's it going? How's your Saturdays going? Good. Hannah, could you just speak the guitar quick strong? <laughs> Give a hand to James. James has been driving me around um, for the last few days, and um, John as well. We are both here from Portland, Oregon, the West Coast. Thank you so much. Hello. One more thing. And he's been so great. Um, yeah. Look at me being great. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. He's being... There we go. My tuner was not being great. <laughs> so, alright. a few songs. I'm going to open the night um, and then we'll have John Craigie come up. He's hilarious, so you guys will be laughing a lot. But I'll sort of start the mood a little bit mellow. song is about a salty man.
takes bigger spaces The longest of days that make lines on their faces So pick up your head, take a walk outside for sale, um, some, some onesies for babies. <laughs> um, and there's only like a few left. <laughs> um, they're really cute. Um, and CDs, um, we all, we both, John and I have CDs. Um, so yeah. Take a look at, at that. I'm going to sing a song about, um, about sort of being, being home and, um, and how oftentimes we, we kind of travel and look for, we're searching for something, but really it's within us. I'm going to try it in this key, actually. <laughs> Hey. 
Get your plane right on time. I know that you're eager to fly now. And hey, let your honesty shine, shine, shine now. But I know, but I know, like it shines on. Sweet morning, and it's on my EP just downstairs at the shop. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, at the yeah, at the drawing room. This has been lovely um, to sing for you guys tonight. I'm Hannah Klaus, and John Craigie is going to be up next.
very low equilibrium. Next door, there is a guy who um, wanted to do some drilling and cutting up tiles and stuff. I did say the word grinding, and uh, John looked very, <laughs> John Kramer looked very concerned. Um, he's cutting up tiles, John, just as you know. Um, so there may be some background noise in the meanwhile, uh, but I'm going to see if I can cover it up with uh, a playlist of uh, stuff that has been recorded on previous shows. But in the meanwhile, we have some cake, if you would like it. It's kind of extra to your bill. It's not uh, part of the, the, the meal. Um, but we've got carrot cake and lemon drizzle, millionaire shortbread. There's a vegan Mars bar. There's a, not made by Mars bar. Uh, there is a vegan, yes, yeah, so we've got somebody who's had his first vegan meal tonight. He's looking slightly indignant. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a sort of vegan Mars bar and a vegan bounty. Uh, anyway, we've got cake, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also something called Maximus Delictatio, which uh, is a made-up name. And uh, it's um, like a chocolate brownie with a hint of ginger, and it comes with cream or ice cream, or both, and it's not particularly vegan. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, gluten they're all gluten-free, all gluten-free. So celiacs start queuing now. In the meanwhile, <laughs> thank you once again to this beautiful girl, Hannah Haas. Thank you. I'm going to go for some brown paper. Could I have a copy of it? Well? Yeah. Just a little bit of Americana, but you've got a copy of what you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my time. Good job. Uh, I'm going to have a coffee. Do you want a coffee? No, thank you. No, 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 no,
I think it must be, you know, a gift for yeah. yeah. probably. Yeah. I mean, like all artists, I think, yeah. Yeah. to create it's a quite a privilege to be in the middle of it. I love it. I have a whole I think it must be quite difficult. I think it's easy to play up in front of Yeah, exactly. Yeah, So it's music, what takes yeah, your spare time, such as you have, it looks like your main no, interest that you both have. Well, and then I just enter it. You're a big fan of John Wayne, yeah. That's what it is. It's not really. No. It's not really. No. It's not really. It's not really. It's not and everything else that goes on. You don't always have the time to. This is a bit of a treat for us, really. Uh, well, you must work long hours if you're going up to Derby every day. Yeah, we both work quite long hours. So, yeah, juggling work and everything, yeah, because I work full time, yeah, she's full time, so, yeah, it gets a bit shoved from your holiday place, which is very resilient, she's a good kid. Does she like school? Loves it, which is a relief, because Warwick can be a hot house. It is. Where does she go on to next, King's Park, or do Warwick Park have girls now? No, so it's all part of the same foundation, so you've got Warwick Park, and then you've got Warwick Boys, it's all part of the same mm. foundation. So the idea is that she'll go to King's Park. No, but it's about an hour away, just, I'm saying that she's yeah. at Windsor, she's yeah. at Windsor, yeah. so she's at Windsor, so we don't have to use, but um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of veering a bit more towards King's Park, which is a bit more holistic. Oh, really? You must have thought about Prince Silver's Royal, my daughter's wedding. Yeah, we've thought about the only thing about Prince. I like Prince. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea, and she's going to take the boys to school. Yeah, so yeah. this is the first year where it's all girls. Um, yeah, yeah. Really so what, what's happened to her? Prince Charles has gone back. Um, so how does that work? So a prince looks um, a mixed yeah. stage. Uh, yeah. Whereas a prince at eight, uh, the boys go yeah, to the boys' school. Oh right, yeah. Girls carry on all the way through until they get to ten or eleven, and then they go off to senior school. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you now, yeah, yeah. So she really enjoyed it with the boys with her, didn't she? And I think, um, yeah, so uh, my, my instinct was to keep sleep, but I think she's doing it because that's where all her friends are going. Oh, but it's just every 30 minutes, minutes at this stage. Yeah, yeah. 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 she already has her own age. Yeah. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure when yours are Well, mine, neither one of them are particularly academic, so in a way, the choices were easier. Beth went to Princeton and Luke went to the college. And neither of them went to university. So, what's Beth doing there? She, she works with horses, her great love is horses. So, she's basically um, doing a very simple 
job looking after as a kind of stable head looking after she's actually got her HGV license she won't you know which she's a very good driver she got it first time but she's for some reason she hasn't taken me up which is a shame because she could make quite a good living as a yeah oh yeah very much so. um, but I think she's she's quite she's quite content Picked up, was it? Yes, not. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, that's rounds. So, um, is it in the tour? Who knows? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll, I'll. No, no, no. Yeah, we were just it's talking funny, about it. It's funny, isn't it? It must be quite uh, hard. Well, it's supposed to be an hour and ten, yeah, but it must be quite hard. Yeah. And then it's that way. We live about fifty minutes from right there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you can do some coding. I've kind of got that. I've got this. I kind of got this thing. That was one of the hardest concepts for us to do. I could do more as well in the 20s. And pick up a bit. Because it's miles away. Because it's 30 minutes away. I'm not sure. 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 i am not I mean, I'm not very lucky with the British of London. You must have found out how you think I've ever drank a lot of Scotland. He's only got, you know, six hours. He's just fine. Six hours. She smoked quite a lot. When she was young, she smoked quite a lot of dough. Which I didn't like. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's no, she she had a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just different. A lot of my friends are working. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
they don't want me to do it. They don't want to do it. And, yeah, she just gets too scared that everyone needs to lose control. And your parents, remember when I started seeing you? We were in our late 20s. And I had to say, Really? Our late 20s. But that, but that was because my parents didn't have a daughter. So they were, they were trying to respect My parents. But having a daughter was a learning curve because I'm one of four boys. So I, you know, I didn't have a sister. I didn't have a sister. But I suppose it, I suppose it really depends. It depends on the child. You know, I mean, one in the US. Yeah. She wouldn't be going 80 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. It was, was better. It was better growing up. Oh no, she was just past two to I thought it was always a kind of cocky attitude. Yeah. 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 Do you think that's yeah, vegan meal? Is that yeah. how it always works? No, I mean, boy, I'm trilogy authority and rules yeah, yeah. are oriented. You know, yeah, I mean, I believe in rules and yeah. systems and working hard and order and, and, you know, we were right and wrong. I mean, you have to be, have that street to be a... Or you, if you don't feel comfortable with that hierarchy. But, but, um, but, you know, your children <laughs> are, are who they are. I think You've got to work with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think I've benefited and I still benefit from the fact that I did. Yeah, it was a hard yard when they were little. Yeah. And therefore, oh, yeah. got yeah. another, another yeah. Yeah. Less, relationship. Um, I mean, I did, I have, I did do boundary setting with Beth. I mean, yeah, she once <laughs> got really <laughs> drunk once. Yeah. Somebody came in and we, uh, said she's in town. She was, <laughs> she was on the thread. And she was sitting in the gutter, she lost her mobile phone, she lost her shoes, she was completely lost. And I said, is it going to be shaking And she was running around. It was very dangerous, so I called the police. She's got a physical and she's completely out of control. And they were really brilliant, about yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And they were really brilliant, the police. They came and they said, we don't think you'll yeah. help me. Yeah. So we'll just go around the corner mm. and they calmly yeah. down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't arrest me, yeah. which I'm very grateful for. Yeah. They, they the next call, they like, said, um, like, we're at the Ramada Hotel with the Ramada Hotel. We're going to take the group of pets. I don't know how to persuade the hotel to take this drunk 15-year-old in. Anyway. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, they, 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 they were so good. It, it almost took the, because there's going to be that conflict between you know, yeah. the parents. Yeah. That's very yeah. right. You know what's yeah. 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 But the next day she came round again. And she said, I'm, I came to the front door. She asked, what are you doing here? You told me you left home. I didn't let you back for three nights. And, 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 and so... You know, Still she went out to stay with friends, and then we had met, and we you know, sorted out some rules, and she was fine after that. I guess you've got to I didn't know I had any more feelings. I thought I was completely soft. I didn't realise I was yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, yeah, but do you know what? I do think I'm a, I'm a big believer sometimes. I don't, I don't want to be Amelie's best friend. I want her to know that she can always come to me, but I'm not her friend. I'm her mother. And she can come to me about absolutely anything. And I will always do the right thing by her, but I'm not her friend. I'm, her no, no, I'm there to look out for her. I'm not there to be your mate. And I think yeah, sometimes they need to. You need to think about it. But I think it's painful, it is. Which is what you do. I think that's the problem. But I think you can. You can I agree with you. You don't have to say, you've got to respect their free choices. Yeah, it's that. It's quite interesting. It's coffee. A lot of people see their kids and they start their shit themselves, and it's a coffee. Oh yeah, I mean, it's like we, you know, this is what we want to do. Like eating, you expected you, whereas we're very much sort of. Well, you obviously you will get a lot of higher achieving and aspirational parents, and I mean, I see particularly with girls. You know, they're setting themselves up for a massive. Particularly, I mean, I work. 
Well, yeah, so you feel like that, and you've got three siblings, whereas you know, have an only child. That yeah, really spread out. To be honest, James is very different. He has to go around people all the time. 
So is that, is that where you two met? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
But some of the smaller yeah, ones yeah. just brought in. Oh, sorry, so I'm going to be taking it all the way into the charging yeah. pack for the business of the can. So that means people are going to get the yeah, yeah, kind of a depth to that. So just grab it. So it just seems like they don't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's very yeah. real. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's really a delight. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now we've uh, gone live again, I'm just going to point out that uh, there's a guy called um, Paul um, who joined us at a recent outdoor gig, and I just remembered about these. And uh, Paul, you were really drunk and you left your glasses <laughs> behind. Um, and it's not appropriate that you turned up that drunk. But, um, he said, I love music, he said. Who doesn't? If you don't, there's a problem. <laughs> so, I've got your glasses. Um, and I owe you a pint, because you paid for two. And you only got one. Um, anyhow, I'm feeling very honoured because this guy, who I know he's only about three or four inches taller than me, but he's about ten inches taller or a foot taller than me in the US because <laughs> loads of people know about John Craigie in the US, but we're only finding out about him in the UK. These guys over there have driven an hour and a half to come and see you, so I know you're going to be good, but tonight you have to be brilliant. Okay? okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Craigie! Yeah. <laughs> Been through my thumb sucking phase, been through my dinosaur phase, been through my Legos phase, been through my Lincoln Logs phase, been through my baseball cards phase, been through my Saturday morning cartoon, saved by the bell phase. Been through my Zeppelin phase, been through my Bowie phase, been through my girls a stupid phase, been through my girls are awesome phase, went through another girls are stupid phase. Oh, what phase is this? Oh, tell me what phase? And how long do I get to keep it? All we do is change, so tell me how long do I get to keep this faith? Went through my teenage phase, no smiling for pictures phase. I went through my hippie phase, my long hair and barefoot phase. Went through my I'm gonna be a teacher phase. It lasted about half of a day. I went through my jam band phase. Lasted a little longer than I needed to. What phase is this? Oh, tell me what phase. And how long do I get to keep it? Oh, all we do is change. All we do is change. 
So tell me How long do I get to keep this thing? Classic literature, library of crime and punishment, and it took forever. And someone handed me an occurring, and, 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 and I was like, No, think of all the places I could go, and people I could meet instead of reading that goddamn book. Well, my face is Lord, tell me what face, and how long do I get to keep it? Oh, how we do is change, how we do is change, so tell me how long do I get to keep this face, how long, how long, how long, how long, how long. show I've ever been to where somebody was chastised <laughs> by a satellite <laughs> for getting too drunk at a previous show. In the first <laughs> Paul, if you're still watching, we all made mistakes. <laughs> Come down, get your glasses, we won't catch you. We love you. years ago about me <laughs> and I was on tour with Patrick he'd never been on a tour before he was so excited at the beginning it was eight shows in we were climbing off stage and Patrick looked sad I didn't know why but I had a hunch see I thought Patrick thought there were going to be a lot more girls on John Crane tour than had been <laughs> so far there have been zero I mean, girls had been in the audience, but we had not talked directly to any of them. Which was fine with me, but not fine with Patrick. <laughs> so, to make Patrick feel better in a moment of impulse, I was like, Patrick, hey, buddy. We ain't leaving this bar till we find you some love. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> but, how... How are you gonna do that? I looked around the room. I was like, I don't know, we'll just talk to one of these girls. How hard can it be? <laughs> Pretty hard, actually. <laughs> For two hours, we sat in the corner not talking to girls. Then I had another idea. I was like, Patrick, we ain't leaving this bar till I write a song about us talking to girls. He's <laughs> like, that sounds a lot more realistic. And there's a grandma 
Illinois and South Dakota And she treats me like a star She tells me she listens to nothing but John Craigie CDs and NPR She says, when are you going to get famous, boy? When are you going to shine? I said, the more famous that she gets Funny, the worst songs that she writes Who here is from Chad? We have a lot of travelers, right? Anybody here from? Any locals? Yeah, one guy. Cool. Right? Thank you for having me in your town. This is a big deal. You know, every it's every American songwriter's dream to make it big in Chesham. <laughs> you got to start here, man. and you got to get your name out there. That's what we're all about. John Cranky, C R A I G I E. Get that spelling that's important. I got myself into some trouble last summer with just not saying my name enough times. I was opening for this guy named Jack Johnson around the country. And this guy's like, he's like, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did. I know. It's, I don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it if, if, you told, if someone told me that. But I guess it happened. <laughs> it says so on the internet. I don't know. I was there, but I, if someone told me it didn't happen, I'd be like, that makes sense. <laughs> it was crazy. It happened. You guys know that. Thing. I was playing all these shows with Jack, and he plays in these big amphitheaters, 20,000 people. That's a lot more than I'm normally playing for. And I, I can play to 20,000 people, but it'll take me nine years to do it. You know, Jack does it in one night. He's very efficient. That's his thing. <laughs> I did my first show in New Jersey, and I did okay, but I did not say John Cranky enough times. Because I was at the merch table after the show, selling some baby onesies, just saying. And <laughs> lots of baby onesies at the Jack shows, for sure. And this guy comes to me, he's like, man, that was so cool. I can't wait to check out more of your music. John Gravy. <laughs> I was like, oh, actually, it's John Craigie. He's like, that's not as cool. I was like, I know, but uh, that's my name. He looked at me, and he looked back at all these 20,000 people behind him, and he was like, everyone thinks it's crazy, bro. I was like, oh, because it's not. <laughs> but that was...
was the biggest crowd I ever played for. I was scared, man. It's like, do I need to change my name to John Gravy now? I had just ordered a hundred baby onesies with John Craigie written on it. Anyway. Craigie with the C. Services at those stores last <laughs> night and tonight after the show. He'll be there uh, helping us uh, provide you with all of your Chesham needs. We got tote bags, we've got t shirts, we've got baby girls, slash baby onesies. <laughs> we've got badges, we've got refrigerator magnets, we've got CDs and vinyl records. And this is, uh, for me, this is, uh, I have. Two more shows after this before I fly back to the U.S. and uh, uh, be really cool to uh, 
say that I sold all my baby grows anyway. You know, just so people would know that I wasn't crazy to bring them over here, which people thought I was. <laughs> we have sold a good amount. We have a few left. Sold out of some other. I did sell out of uh, one of my albums, but I want to play you a song off of it. It's an album called Scarecrow, and it has a lot of quiet, sad songs on it. And this is a, this is I think this song is is very sad, but it has a little sassiness to it, which makes it fun. And uh, I wrote this song as a response to some of the compliments I was getting through email. People were saying nice things to me about my songwriting, but I was noticing a pattern in the emails. People were always saying this stuff. They were like, Dear John, thank you for uh, your songs. I just got dumped. Your music makes me feel better. <laughs> Dear John, uh, I just got fired. Your music makes me feel better. <laughs> Dear John, no one likes me. Your music makes me feel better. <laughs> And that's great, because that's where they come from. But not once did I ever get like an email that said, Dear John, me and my girlfriend hold hands and skip along the beach journey. <laughs> well, that made me sad, but then I looked at the songs. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't hold anybody's hand to this stuff. This is not hand-holding, beach-skipping music. So I was like, I, I need to write one. Hold my hand and skip down the beach with me, please. <laughs> That's all I had for like three days. <laughs> no, I'm not going to write that song. Abandoned it. I'm glad I did. It wouldn't have felt right. You know, I'm just not, it's not my kind of music. It's not what, I'm, it's not what I, what comes out naturally. All my friends get all these wedding gig offers. Come play our wedding. Come play our wedding. No one ever asked me to play their wedding. That's okay. But you know, if people have parties for their divorce, I'd be booked for the next three years. <laughs> I'd love to play a divorce. I have so many songs for that. A couple kids. Yeah, yeah it's tough. <clears throat> I got the songs for the divorce. This is a song that'd be great for a divorce party. This is, this is a song about hanging out with your ex, which is never any fun. <laughs> Unless you're one of those people who's friends with your ex. I call those people crazy. <laughs> no, of course. I'm no kidding. If you're friends with your ex, wow, what an amazing human you are. So kind and beautiful. If you're not friends with your ex, though, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's totally normal to not be friends with your ex. That's why, I, yeah, this table knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's why we break up, so we don't have to be friends with our exes. <laughs> Why they, the Lord invented the breakup. <laughs> but you got hope. I don't want. Here's what I don't want. I don't want you guys to be to hate your exes. We don't need negativity in our life. Just be polite and never speak to them again. That's the best way to do. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I mean you got to hang with your ex. Though you got to see them at the social events. That's okay. But it's a weird hang. It's awkward because you got to just pretend like everything's normal and ignore the fact that you used to hug naked all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's a weird hang. Well, you're not friends. You're not like, you don't know, you do, you're not like people who don't know each other. You know each other very well. <laughs> but still, you're at the party, you're like, hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, good to see you. Have you tried this guacamole? Oof, man. What a, it's out of sight, man. It is top notch guacamole. It's got lemon and coriander and I don't want to use the hug naked. No, you can't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> but you know you gotta see the ex every now and then because if you do that thing when you never talk to your ex then it's really annoying because all they do is remember you as you were when you dated you know run, you run into those exes sometimes and they're like yeah do you still like love the goo goo dolls you're like come on man it was 15 years ago and yes sometimes but still <laughs> please don't remember me as someone who loves the goo goo dolls so that's what this song's about <laughs> I dedicated it to anyone who came here with their ex tonight. Pause 
feel me. And I was like, people aren't going to be like sitting right here, are they? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Okay, thanks for letting me sing that song about exes. It's all love songs from here on out. If I had more than one love song, which I don't, so. <laughs> I'll play you my one love song now. Romantic. People are here. Lovers are here tonight. They got to be kind of step on my game. No pressure, bro. It's not, it's not the best date show, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it isn't. It's not a bad date show, but it's not. This is definitely the show of I Just Got Dumped <laughs> show. Come on, it's okay. <laughs> it is. The dumb people got to go somewhere. <laughs> you know, they're not going to Ed Sheeran. I mean, they are. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. That was, <laughs> what do I, why do I have to knock on Ed Sheeran? It's great. I just assume he has lots of love songs and a lot of couples go see Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Is Ed Sheeran from Chesham? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know where Ed Sheeran's from. I'm acting like I don't know anything about it. I'm like, I know everything about Ed Sheeran. I have all his albums. <laughs> <laughs> One time, though, I remember I was doing a show in Missoula, Montana. And I was at the merch table after the show, and this this young couple came up to me, and they were in. Uh, she was in a nice dress, and he was in like a little suit. And they told me that they had ditched their prom to come to my show. I was like, that is so flattering. And they were like, yeah, proms are lame. We're, you know, we're too cool for that. And I was like, you guys are gonna be all right. <laughs> and they, because they were eighteen or seventeen or whatever, young love. But I was bitter. <laughs> I still am bitter, but I was bitter too. <laughs> That's a Mitch Hedberg joke, but with bitter instead of drugs. But, anyway. 
But I, they, they each bought a CD. They wanted me to sign them. I was like, no problem. They're like, sign each CD to both of us. I was like, uh, how about I sign each CD to one of you? That way when you break up, you each can take one. And they were like, oh, we're never going to break up. I was like, uh, okay. So I signed each to both, but came back to Missoula six months later. Guess who had broken up? <laughs> they came together as friends, though. Exes still talk to each other. Crazy. <laughs> I'll do a song. This is my. This is a love song, though. This is the most beautiful, amazing love song that Ed Sheeran wishes he wrote. Just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this song is called "Let's Talk This Over When We're Sober and Not a Burning Man." That's 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 the best I can do with love songs. I'm sorry, guys. It's a good song. I, I wrote it about a couple that walks past the Burning Man. I heard the guy say to his girl, "Honey, let's talk this over when we're sober and not a Burning Man." I said, that's the sweetest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> so I wrote this song. Hmm. And I played it. I played a Burning Man when I can. Mm -hmm. Who, you guys know what Burning Man is? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Nice, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a crazy, it's a crazy festival. It took me years to go because everyone tried to scare me away from it. I was living in Santa Cruz, California at the time where there was a lot of hippies. Mm -hmm. I was ready, but people didn't know that. They would say, John, I don't think you can handle Burning Man. It's a lot of people naked on drugs, running around, dancing and having drum circles. You can't handle that. I was like, that sounds like a Santa Cruz <laughs> farmer's market. We have one. <laughs> <laughs> I could handle it. <laughs> Inside of our tent, oh baby Don't you know that I understand Yeah, but this really ain't the best time and place This is one of the other 358 days Let's talk this over When we're sober And we're not at burning that's my sing-along chorus of the night. <laughs> I know we're very close to each other, so if you don't sing along, I will know, but don't feel bad. I'm not one of those camp counselor songwriters who's like, everybody must sing. I just would like that to happen. But I'll keep my eyes closed so I won't even know. But the sing-along goes, let's talk this over when we're sober, not a burning man. Let's try it together, Trisha Moon. Let's talk this over when we're sober and we're not in a burning man. Sounds like you're saying. I know you want to complain about your roommate again because she never ever does any of her dishes. All she needs to do is just leave that no good man. Let's talk this over Think we're sober And we're not a burning man I know that you think That I smoke too much pot I know you think my lazy ass friends Should all get jobs Trust me, I know I told you Grandpa looks kind of like a pug You got me, man Don't want to 
want to talk about your issues with your mom and your dad. I don't want to talk about how under no circumstances should I ever, ever, ever wear jean shorts. Oh yeah, but maybe it's okay if I cut them off at the ends. You know, I don't really want to have this conversation. Come on, baby. Let's go climb on some crazy ass art. Oh, 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 oh. There is so much that we could process, girl, when we get back to that old default world of fair, honey. Let's enjoy this part of while we can. Well, now we could talk about some serious stuff, but I hear there's a wooden man that they're about to blow up. Let's talk this over. Ship. Let's talk this over. We were sober, and we're not at anything. Let's talk this over. We were sober. CD of mine called John Crazy Live, <coughs> opening for Steinbeck. I have two kinds of CDs down there. I have live ones where I'm in a room with people and I'm singing my songs and talking in between like I'm doing tonight. Then I have albums which are studio albums which uh, I record in a room where nobody is and I don't talk in between the songs because that would be weird. Um, <laughs> if I did. I'd like to play you a song. I'm enjoying my time out here in the UK and, I'm, and it's bring, making me nostalgic uh, of all of my uh, travels um, outside of the US, uh, which I would love to do more. I've done some. And uh, the first time I, uh, I performed in Europe was in 2012. I did a tour all through um, uh, sort of Southern Europe and a little bit in the North. And I didn't get to make it to the UK, which, which was sad, but now here we are in Cheshire, breaking in, breaking through like you do. <laughs> and I, I would like to sing you a song that I wrote in Amsterdam um, in, in a very quick moment. And it's, uh, the song itself is sad, but I think the story uh, of why I wrote it is, is uh, interesting and perhaps humorous. What had happened um, was I don't know a lot about art history. Uh, I wish I did, but I went to uh, Catholic school. I don't know if you guys have Catholic school here in England. But um, in the States, we have Catholic school. I went to Catholic school for all of my grades. And um, they taught me stuff, but uh, art was not high on the list. And so we'd have like one art class a year. And mostly it was just like um, drawing that turkey with your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame these teachers because it was, you know, it's this poor teacher who has all this art knowledge and has to cram it all into 45 minutes. And so it was a lot of stuff like, they were just fast. Like, okay, boom, here's Michelangelo's, David ain't got no pants. Okay, here's Dolly's clocks, they're melting. Um, here's here's uh, Picasso, it's a bunch of squares. Okay, here's Van Gogh, uh, cut off his ear, uh, gave it to some girl. All right, get your hands out, let's draw these turkeys. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> That's all I knew about Van Gogh. Starry night, and he didn't have a ear, cut it off. That's all I knew. So fast forward, 2012, I'm in Amsterdam, you know, and I'm like, I should go to that Van Gogh Museum. And I decided to be the first person in history to go to the Van Gogh Museum, not on drugs. <laughs> because every time I'd ever heard someone talk to me about the Van Gogh Museum, it was always like, dude, I got super high, and went to the Van Gogh Museum, and I was dreaming. And so I was like, I'm gonna do that. So I stayed sober went to the Van Gogh Museum, and I'm pretty sure I was the first ever because the security guard started to get worried about me because I was the only person who wasn't just like, whoa, colors. <laughs> I was like there all reading the little plaques like, oh, painted in France, interesting. <laughs> so this guy comes to me, he's like, hey man, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I just, I didn't do any drugs, is that okay? He was like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> he's like, can we talk about Van Gogh because I have so much Van Gogh knowledge? 
And every time I try to talk about Van Gogh, these trippers are like, what? I was like, talk to me about Van Gogh. So he walked around, he was telling me all this cool stuff. We got to the painting of Van Gogh with the bandage over his ear. He said, John, do you know about the update on Van Gogh's ear? I said, I don't know the update. He said, what do you know? I was like, I don't know, he cut it off and gave it to some girl, so they told me. He's like, well, that's what people thought. They thought that Van Gogh had gone crazy, and cut off his ear, and had given it to his favorite prostitute, Rachel. I was like, man, when you have a favorite prostitute, things are you're really, you're really in the game. <laughs> favorite prostitute, Rachel. He said, but now they're thinking that's not exactly what happened. I was like, what are they thinking? Apparently what he told me was that Van Gogh was living in France at that time and he was hanging out a lot with this guy whose name is uh, Gauguin, for, forgive my pronunciation. You guys might know that artist, he paints all those island women. They were buddies, but they were always fighting, they, were, they had a very volatile friendship. And one night they were fighting and Gauguin pulled out his sword, he liked, he liked to pull out his sword, I guess, every now and then. <laughs> he was swinging it all around, <laughs> nicked off half of Van Gogh's ear. And the girl's like, what, bro? You just cut off my ear. And the guy's like, ah, oh, damn, I'm sorry. The cops showed up, and, and they were like, did this guy just cut off your ear? Because if he did, we'll have to arrest him. And the guy's like, I cut it off myself. And they're like, classic Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> his own ear off. And then Van Gogh went to go see Rachel, to be like, ow, look what happened, dude. And she was like, ew, gross, you're real. <laughs> that was the story. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that was the update as of 2012. <laughs> I haven't checked the Wikipedia article for Van Gogh's ear lately. Anyway, but I thought about that. I got my bike and I was biking back to where I was staying. And, and I remember I was just, it, that was very sad to me that he would be so misunderstood for all these years. And I remember I, I knew this guy in uh, Amsterdam. He was, a, he was an American. He was teaching out there. And I, I, every now and then you'd get a song coming so quick. I couldn't wait till I got back to my place. So I, I went to his school. And I was like, do you have a guitar? He said, yes. And he led me to one of the classrooms. And I wrote the song real quick. It's not a great song. And it's not a funny song. But this is a song about uh, Van Gogh's ear. And I was 100% sober when I wrote it. <laughs> My name is Rachel, and I was born here on the coldest day in May. And I work here in this brothel, and I do not feel ashamed. And you can tell me the men are faithless, and you can tell me the men are sin. I've cured the devil, I've held the innocent. was a painter, he used to come here, at least when he could afford, which wasn't often, but when it did, it was me he would implore, and they told me he was crazy, but I did not seem to hear, until one night, when he gave me a bloody piece of his ear, oh, Vincent. Who has hurt you so? Oh, Vincent. How is I to know? In the long run, history will make it clear. But all my screens will fill your dreams. Some of the passion, some of the fear. Another painter named Gauguin, more famous, I suppose. And they were friends, or maybe lovers. I was painters, you never know. And they were screaming, and they were fighting. Gauguin, you was blamed. You slashed that Paul Vincent, and then never spoke again. Oh, Vincent. Who has hurt you so? Oh, Vincent. 
country's most recent presidential election, <laughs> which is now almost two years ago. We got two to go before the next one. And uh, I had a gig two days after that Thursday in Northern California. I don't know if you guys were paying attention, but that was a big deal for us. You know, we were very torn. Our country was very torn at that point. And uh, I got to the venue, the lady said, John, it's a sold out crowd tonight, but everyone here is very sad. I said, I get it. She said, but we can't wait to hear all the songs you have written about this momentous occasion. Songs that will make us laugh and cry in the same song, like it says you do on your website. I was like, it's only been two days, man. She was like, you're on 15 minutes, can't wait to hear all the songs. <laughs> But she was right, you know. I looked out at that crowd, they were very sad. I was like, I can't go out there and just sing about Burning Man all night. Like, these people need something. So I sat there, and I thought I'd pull this next song out of my ass. But luckily, my ass was feeling very emotional. <laughs> and let's be grateful. Let's, oh. Uh, that dude hasn't started grinding yet, right? <laughs> or maybe he's just a quiet grinder, which some of us are, and that's okay. 
That was very beautiful when you said that to me. There's a man out there, he wants to grind on something. I was like, don't we all, my friend? I usually don't tell my neighbors when I'm going to grind on something. People are more polite here. You know, so. I don't want to send any negative stereotypes back home. I'm not going to tell people that. In England, they just tell their neighbors when they're going to <laughs> Going to be doing some grinding. Um, <laughs> these guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, back to this. The opposite of grinding. This is about uh, the most recent presidential election. <laughs> I just, that's how I opened the show. I went out on stage. I looked into their sad Northern California eyes. And I said this. Asked if I could start again. They didn't look any happier, so I did a quick rewrite. Offered up a slightly more optimistic opening line. I said, Most, 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 most things are fucked. Yeah, but please don't give up on me now. I'm here to get you out of this dark hole. Cranky, make them laugh, make them cry off. That's what it says in your bio. Oh, make them cry. It'll be easy tonight. Way too easy tonight. But make them laugh. Almost impossible. It's like a funeral. Things have to get worse before they get better. Mm -hmm. It's just not true. Things could just get better. Stay better. Continue to get better. But that's not what things usually do. 
This task rose apart as Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, every now and then. There's a bunch of bullshit. We gotta fight it. stuff and after every show someone would come to me and they would say man you should go where they speak English because we don't know what the hell you're talking about <laughs> I was like noted so I was like I was like I'll go to England they speak English and so I came here last year it was my first time being here. And it was fun to kind of to come and just hang out and, and and meet everybody and just feel that that beautiful relationship that we have you know it's 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 a complex one America England we have, a, we have a rich history, and slightly dramatic, you know. When I was here, I realized that, like, we are one of your children, you know. We are. You raised us, fed us, clothed us. And then when we were teenagers, we were kind of brats, you know. We were like, screw you, Mom and Dad. We're running away from home. We're going to do this ourselves. And you were like, uh, don't do that. And we were like, whatever. And we, and we ran <laughs> to, like, our treehouse, you know, in the United States. We started setting up our own thing, and you guys came over, and you're like, come on, you're st stupid, don't do that. We fought, we fought, we fought, we got really mad. So tense, you know. All the same. But then, we lived, we grew up, you know. Now, we, I hope we think that we're all right now. You know, we're just another one of your kids. Coming home for Thanksgiving. Or I guess this is you. <laughs> some, some British audience. So. You guys have a lot of kids, though, you know? Beautiful. Beautiful. You got lots of kids. Australia's one of your kids. Canada's one of your kids. Canada's our brother. You know, we live next to Canada now. I don't know if you guys know that, but we live there. <laughs> Canada's the good brother. Canada's obviously the good brother. You know, stayed at home until he was 18. Still keeps in touch with mom, went to the college, she chose, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> we love Canada. Who doesn't love Canada? Everybody loves Canada. But, you know, they're our little brother, and we got to be a better, bigger brother to them. We, as in us. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are a great mom to them. But we're not the best older brother. We're not. We sit there, and we, like, we just don't know anything about them. It's classic older brother stuff, where they know everything about us. We hang out, they're like, oh, my God, how are things going with Trump? And... Oh, with the hurricanes, and we're just like, yeah, how's hockey going? Is that good? <laughs> I bet hockey's going good. Canada tries to be cool when it hangs out with its brothers, though. Canada's always like, yeah, we don't talk to mom that much either. I look down, I'm like, is that her on your money? They're like, ah, don't worry about that. That's not her. That's not her <laughs> so I came to England. I came home to mom because mom speaks English, you know. Kind of. There's differences, you know. It's different. It's different. Small things, things I knew. Some things I knew. Some things I didn't know. I got myself into an embarrassing situation because no one had ever taught me the whole trousers thing. <laughs> you know what I'm about? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. They don't teach that in, they in our don't, school. They don't. <laughs> Teaches about Lou and all that stuff. <laughs> I knew what a Lou was. 
the problem is, is that we have the word trousers in our country, but we also have pants. And what and you guys know this, but what you call trousers, we call pants. What you guys call un, uh, pants, we call underwear. Oof, that's ripe for some misunderstanding. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I talk a lot about pants on stage. I do. Because I like, I like embroidered jeans, I like bell-bottom jeans, and I can't get those in the States in men's sizes, or men's at all. So I have to shop in the women's department. I'm not ashamed. These pants, I'm, sorry, these trousers I'm wearing right now, I bought <laughs> in, in the ladies' department. I, and I, yeah, I taught and don't care, man. It's just, it's just jeans. But I talk about it on stage, because I'm wondering maybe there'll be some little American boy in the back, you know, who's like, I want to wear bell-bottoms too, but I can't find them in the, in the men's section. Wear some girls jeans, bro, it's all good. <laughs> it's 2018, who cares? There I was in Nottingham, it was my first show of the tour last year. A woman yells out, I like your bell bottoms. And I said, thank you, I only wear women's pants. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was like, well, it's not our business. <laughs> what you got going on down there? I didn't know until after the show, somebody told me, so embarrassing. And I love America, I do, but America definitely screwed me on that one. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's not like that pants or trousers were invented after the United States was formed, you know. That word was around. That means when the pilgrims came to the United States, they were like, okay, 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 okay. New country, new rules. No more trousers. No more kings and queens. Definitely no more trousers. We'll call them pants from now on. And the rest of the pilgrims were like, what do we call what's under the pants? I don't know, underpants? Come on, guys, we got a country to run in. <laughs> you know, there was some weird guy in the back who's like, how about we just call them panties? I'm like, no, Doug, we're not calling them panties. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, it's weird, you're weird, everybody out there. <laughs> oh, but Doug persisted. <laughs> you come to the States and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Just <laughs> anyway, I want to sing about California. I want to bring up my good friend Hannah Haas to help me sing that. What do you guys think? Give a hand to the boss. <laughs> we'll just share this microphone, I guess. So. You try to drown your sorrow. You shouldn't have taught them how. To swim, now you are right back where you began. Winter skies are approaching, all alone in the wasteland, alone is the only. Way that they let you in. So drink all my wine and cut all my trees. Make love on my beaches. Smoke all my weed. I am California. Can't you see? Wherever you roam, you always want me. And we struggle with our lovers. We don't know what to let in. Cause the new ones pay for the old ones.
been gone my way and cut all my trees. Been love all my beach, yeah, smoke all my weed. I am California, can't you see? Wherever you roam, you always want me. Yeah, dig all my gold. I'll do one more for you, then say yeah, free into your Cheshire me evening. Come say hi as you walk downstairs. And we got CDs, vinyl records, magnets, tote bags, badges. <laughs> Maybe baby girls. <laughs> Poor C harmonica. I think it's on its last legs. Yeah. Yeah. If I stay past <laughs> five, since it's pretty up here, but down low. Uh, we got one more for you. <laughs> I'll say I'll close out tonight with a song I wrote one night after I met this guy who told me he wrote. Mr. Tambourine Man by Bob Dylan. He told me that Bob Dylan stole it from him. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he told me. And I sat with this guy and we talked about life and love and music. And I liked every word he said. It was poetry. And I didn't... He, he laughed. I didn't know what to do. Sat there with all of his lines swirling through my head. I figured the best thing I could do would be to steal everything he said and put into my new song. <laughs> I figured if it could work for Bob, it could work for me. So this is a co-ride between me and some drunk guy in New Orleans. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming tonight. <clears throat> Thank you.
Excellent. Could we get a front row seat for a girl called Emily? Um, would you dedicate <laughs> our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same name. It's seven year old. Uh, she's, she adores you. Oh, that's so sweet. And um, it's weird actually, but let's leave that yeah, one alone. Really um, <laughs> anyhow, sure it is. If these, if we next time you're back, yes. out of yours. Okay. Uh, Summer's Day, uh, Emily front row, and yes. if you could de dedicate. Uh, there's a track of yours called Rough. Rough Jones. Oh yeah. Rough Jones. Rough Jones. Would you do that? Sure. How old is she? Seven. seven. Okay. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> she loves you. She absolutely <laughs> worships you. you. <laughs> I probably would dedicate the song to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she does like I'm California as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is she watching on TV right now? Or no? She will be. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Still, I won't dedicate this. <laughs> I'm sure she's a lovely, lovely seven-year-old, but uh, she doesn't uh, understand. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I did do. Um, it's always cool with kids. Like I don't normally think kids will like the music. Um, I never thought that it would be sort of kids' music, but I, sometimes I have to play. I have a niece. My sister has two kids, and my niece lives in Santa Barbara, California. And whenever I play in Santa Barbara, they have me go play at her school. Uh, which I don't care for, but uh, I do it because I know it's a nice thing to do. <laughs> but it gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, it's not the kid's fault. I was a, a teacher briefly before I did this job, and I really didn't like it. And so whenever I'm in front of a group of kids, I have my flashbacks <laughs> to being a teacher. <laughs> um, but I was doing that California song. I was no, the lady, the teacher said, will you sing the California song? My fourth graders will like it. I said, okay. She said, but I, I would like you to change some lyrics. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. I don't normally get censored, but I suppose. What do you think? Is it the make love on my beaches? She's like, no, that's cool. We're all, we're all, you know, California too. That's cool. But I don't like to smoke all my weed. <laughs> I said, okay. I don't know what to change it to. She's like, well, we're kind of doing gardening. Maybe you could say, mow all my weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to say that. <laughs> She's 
She's like, how about pull all my weeds? I was like, it's not how we're getting rid of the weeds, lady. It's just the whole... <laughs> it's interesting thing. Anyway. Emily, thanks for listening. <clears throat> Thank you, so not least to James who introduced to uh, John to this place. Uh, I think he's uh, downstairs watching this on TV. Um, <laughs> and to you guys rocking up tonight uh, for the distance you've travelled, for the hardship in all the money you've had to earn to kind of pay your tickets to be here. Rock on. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, also, the guys on sound, we have, jo uh, we have Tom and we have Ed who's hiding behind here. He's, Six foot five or six foot six at the age of 13 or 14. I can't even hit him, he gets it wrong. Um, Harris, who's also been looking after you as well, and um, Hannah, darling, what a girl. Let's one more noise for this beautiful girl, and in fact, all the musicians. Thank you. We'll be back in a, in a week's time. We have the Heron Brothers here. If anybody would like to come back, get in touch. We'd love to see you again. Thank you so much. 
be a bit of background music. You don't have to go. But if you do go, um, if you could set the bills on your way out, it helps to, to stay in business for next week. And uh, it saves on clearing up. And I'd love you for it anyway. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.